So I need another light on this side of the garage, but I'll come later. So let's get that taped off. and cut this lip off here. Glasses keep fogging up because I got the wrong type of mask.
Okay. Well, that didn't go as smooth as yesterday, but it's off. And go ahead and sand the front of this flat. Get you some, uh, you can get paint match or as close as you can, uh, touch up paint or touch up marker and touch up the front of that. It's really not that noticeable once you pull that off. But I will later on get the uh, touch up paint to get that so that it looks better. But I'm going to sand it down and then take my measurements. Just like with all sanding stuff, you want to go coarser to find a sandpaper. Probably get it a little bit better than that off camera just trying to get this video. So we take off. take my measurements and what I did was measure it in between here flat on the body to the edge of here and then at the bottom yeah, there's this bead here it's like a rubber in between the welds of the body put the tape on the top of here and measure it to that corner right there really close to the measurements that I had on the other side. So now you can get to work on taking off those hinges. Alright, like I said, all the factory bolts are 13s. 
and a long extension, short extension, and just the regular ratchet is kind of what I got. Best results out of it. Having all of them helps. Tightening them back down. I'm not sure if there's any specific torque requirements. The instructions don't say so. So, I mean, it's your door. So, you'll know how tight you want it to not come off. Tools help. And you can see just how much the door dropped. Uh, here, just a little. Probably couldn't really see because the way I had the camera. Get a bit of camera angle. There's two. So now at this point, you want to go ahead and pop your rubber boot off, disconnect your two connectors inside so that you can get ready to mount up the 
Never get any door hands. I kind of just push on it. They provide you plenty of wire so you don't have to worry about extending wire or anything like that. It's just little push tabs. Push them in, pop them out. is that this is the way it came but when you put it back in this hole is going to be blocked by the aftermarket hinge a little bit so I flipped it where this end with the two ears are going on the inside and this one goes here it's easier to get in there it's not as bulky for some reason and I'm going to cut this in half and put one side on the body other side on the door because they provide you a wire loom that goes in the middle of it. Alright. I'm going to take the hinge. On the C5s, the kit only requires you to use two at the top for the door and one at the top for the door. I mean, the one at the bottom for the door. And two on the body at the top and two on the body at the bottom. So if you look at the kit, you'll see the thicker points and the thinner points. Of course the thicker ones you take the longer screws, the thinner ones you take the shorter screws. washer somewhere but so right now to get the hinge held up we'll go ahead and do a long one at the top not in, it's just there to hold it. So I can uh, get this crap out of the way. Tuck those into the door. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I can get you to see this. These two holes match up. The bottom hole on the door part that, of the uh, kit it has a section for a screw to go in, but that's for the C6 body, not the C5s. For the longer bolts, they have thicker washers.
back out with the bigger washer on it. Kit does say to tighten the ones on the door before you tighten the ones on the body. I'm just getting them all started hand tight first. That way I can make my adjustments. It didn't fall too much, maybe an eighth inch. So it won't be too much adjustments needed. I stayed up pretty tight. is just good enough where I can uh, get my other hinges in there. I mean, uh, bolts. This was having so much trouble getting started. Try 
Ja, ja. Of course, that's in the way too. 